Welcome, everybody. Um, uh, thank you for attending tonight's Artist Talks for the 48th Annual Jury Show. Um, I am Emily Hankins. I am the new curator and gallery manager of the UWM Union Art Gallery. Tonight's events will be recorded, so be sure to follow the Union Art Gallery on Facebook or Instagram for access to tonight's recording. A little housekeeping before we get started. If you weren't aware, the Union Art Gallery is an art space dedicated to the exhibition of diverse contemporary art. Our mission is to present a broad range of visual art by exhibiting work in all media by local, regional, and national emerging and established artists. We pride ourselves on being an accessible space for UWM students, student artists, to exhibit and learn. Our goals are to bring outstanding contemporary art to the UWM campus community, to reflect the diversity of the university and greater Milwaukee communities, to connect the university and the public through relevant art and cultural programs, and to support student emerging and established artists by providing opportunities for the creation and exhibition of cutting edge visual art. In addition, the Union Art Gallery supports Black Lives Matter. Please visit our Black Lives Matter resource page for access to resources designed primarily for white and non-Black allies that educate on issues of racism and oppression. You can also find links to take action as well as further information on local Black artists and Black owned businesses to support. Uh, in the comment section of tonight's event, you will find this link along with links to our virtual exhibitions. And I'm going to pop those in there now. Just wanted to wait till people are here. There we go. It's a lot of links, so bear with me. <laughs> all right. And after all of that, tonight we will hear from eight artists who have work in our current exhibition, the 48th Annual Jury Show. The exhibition is currently online this year, and you are cordially invited to virtually visit it whenever suits your schedule. I included it in the previous list of links in the chat, and I will provide those links again at the end of the event as we wrap up. All right. Um, each artist will have about 10 or so slides with 30 seconds per slide to talk. They will briefly introduce themselves and discuss their artwork and inspirations. As we go along, feel free to drop messages or words of encouragement in the chat. We will have some time at the end if people have any questions for the artists. And at the end of the presentations, before questions, feel free to unmute your mics and make some noise for all of these amazing artists. All right, well, with all of that out of the way, let's get started. Yes, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Giovanni Hernandez Caballero. I am in my second year at the Peck School of the Arts at UWM. I'm currently studying to get my BFA in photography with minors in journalism and Spanish. Uh, yeah, some career goals for me are to go into photojournalism, you know, work for big organizations such as New York Times, National Geographic, and also kind of do a couple of explore, explorations and travel with my work. And then this right here, this first image, I think is a uh, very representational of who I am and who I am as not only as an artist, but as a person. My family history dates back centuries. Um, it goes back towards the indigenous people of Oaxaca, Mexico, which is kind of the Southern part of Mexico, closer to Central America. You know, my ancestors were hunters, gatherers, farmers, but most importantly, they were artists. You know, um, they belong to an indigenous tribe called the Mistecos, which means the cloud people. At a young age, my parents would tell me stories of the mountains that would cover the land, uh, the beautiful rivers, you know, and my mom would tell me stories of her as a child, where she lived, you know, just various adventures that she went on as a kid. But most importantly, she told me about how much she missed home and how much she missed her own parents. So for me, knowing this at a young age, I really started to get to know who I was. You know, for me growing up, I had to grow up quickly. I knew the harsh realities of this world. You know, my reality was, you know, I was this little brown kid, you know, living in poverty in the south side of Mexico, uh, in the south side of Milwaukee, you know, one of the most segregated cities in the country. You know, I, I lived in poverty, I went to school, I jumped around from public school to public school, and my life was always 
it, it was difficult. High school for me was a very pivotal moment in my life. Obviously, as you can see, high school wasn't the best, but it did shape me to be the person I am today. Without those experiences that I endured, I wouldn't really understand what my purpose was. What I went through gave my art meaning. It gave me a purpose to continue to create art. It made me realize the importance that art had. And it made me realize also how I can use art. So for me, I learned that art was meant as a tool, a tool to help people, a tool to tell stories, you know, to share experiences, to display controversial or complex issues in a way that people can understand it, in a way that we can be empathetic towards one another, a way to kind of bring light to something that not a lot of us may know about or bring light to something that all of us know. And this image right here is kind of one of the first images I created at UWM. It holds a very special place in my practice as an artist. This piece is titled El Sacrificio, El Sacrificio, which translates to the sacrifice. A lot of my work really revolves around my own life experiences, uh, about my culture, my identity, who I am. And a lot of that kind of goes towards being a son of migrants. You know, what does it mean? So for me, I always kind of capture the stories of my families, do a lot of work where I'm able to explore my life, not only my life here in the US, but the life my parents left behind. And also to further that, I'm not only sharing kind of stories of my own life through art, but the lives of millions of migrants who make the same sacrifice in order to achieve a better life, you know, for their kids and themselves. So for me, my artwork serves as a celebration on the resiliency, courage, and determination of migrants, the aspects that I believe truly make migration beautiful. Hi, um, my name is Maria Conlin. I'm a ceramics major at UWM and um, I'm in my senior year. Um, so I'm just gonna be showing some illustrations that I've done. And then at the end, I also included some ceramic work I'm doing currently for my uh, senior project. Sometimes too fast and sometimes too slow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, this is the first uh, illustration I'm showing. This one's the one in the, uh, the, the show currently, and um, it's titled Drifter, and it's kind of the first uh, illustration I did in this style with like the super detailed, you know, stippling work and whatnot. Um, I think, I, I guess what really like started me doing these illustrations were, was like just looking for ways to fill time during the pandemic in a, in a way. Um, I've always loved drawing and like, uh, I guess since being a ceramics major, I haven't done many time consuming projects outside of clay. So I was given a lot of free time and given the chance to like explore more like my illustrative style. So that's kind of where this came from originally. Um, I've always kind of loved um, being outside and exploring and I have a, a great love for nature and uh, passion for it. And so I kind of, for this one, I actually found this bird on the ground and uh, I was just kind of lying there. So I just took a picture of it. And like, in this case, I was just kind of staring at the picture on my phone <laughs> and trying to capture every little detail. And I think like, in a way doing so like acts of preserving the life that the animal had. And, um, you know, in the, in the drawing, you don't see that like the process of decay. So I think that's, that's what I was trying to, to emulate in the illustration. So um, for this one, um, I found a picture of roadkill and, kind of loosely based the form off of that. Instead of going for a grotesque look, I wanted to soften the image and make it seem more fragile. And so I used um, red poppies instead of like using blood or like a more gory 
um, effect. And I think it gave it that kind of dramatic effect um, while contrasting with the background as well. Um, I really like to capture you know, that texture of uh, fur and um, it's a very like meditative process for me, I think. And I was able to explore like a new medium because I hadn't really worked with like the micron type pens before. So it was it was just very, it's kind of exciting to step away from like 3D art and get back into illustrative art. Um, this is the most recent one I've finished. Um, and I think this one like feels the most tragic because it, you know, the animal appears is still alive and like perhaps suffering. Um, and I kind of branched, you know, out of like with more with more color. And um, I think it gives the piece like kind of a page out of a storybook feel. Um, I want like to in the future uh, explore like playing with um, composition and adding more elements instead of doing kind of just one focal point. This is, <laughs> this is going way faster than I thought. <laughs> um, this is like the recent work I've been doing with, uh, from part of my senior project, kind of, uh, making wall hangings, uh, again, like still using animal forms, um, and exploring like human emotions through these forms. So this is, I've kind of been like branching, like or I guess combining 2D elements with 3D elements and seeing like and playing around with that because I I guess in that way I consider myself like multidisciplinary because I love both and so I want to try and like combine the two in the future and see what happens with that and um, I think also like in the future like out once I graduate I want to try and explore like with like more abstraction and okay thanks thank you. <laughs> Hi everyone, um, I'm Katie Grinnell. I'm a senior attending the Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design and I'm getting my BFA in New Studio Practice and I have minors in Art History and Art Management. My work is really abstract and process driven. I explore darkroom photography, collage, painting, and digital imagery. Um, so yeah, before I get into my work, I just wanted to list um, a few artists that inspire me. Or also, maybe I'll just go to this slide instead. Um, so yeah, um, the first piece I'm going to show you are just some darkroom um, series that I've been exploring because I, again, my background is in drawing and painting. So my more recent work has really been influenced by elements of photography. I really like working in darkroom photography because I like working with um, unknown and unpredictable outcomes, which darkroom stuff really lends itself to that. And so from that series, I really wanted to explore collage and montage. So I took that previous photogram series and I'm really interested in appropriating my previous work into the next. And I really wanted these montages to take that old work and those objects and create like a natural virtual environment with them. And that's also when I really started to use the scanner in a strategic way. And most of my works utilize like the scanner in some way. And so I started to use the scanner, which is typically a tool for documentation um, as a way to like um, host thoughts and narratives and emotions. So I create stop motion animations using the scanner. Um, and yeah, it's really a process of like taking my collage work and just making it move. I layer like hundreds of digital and um, scanned images into these animations. And mm -hmm. these animations really um, center around expressing mm -hmm. um, compulsive thoughts that are like really reiterated by the form of the looped GIF. I really like um, creating work that is GIFs because I like to create work that lives at, on the internet as well. And I really like to use the repetitive and glitching display to um, show the nature of compulsive thoughts. Um, also, my work tends to be really chaotic and overwhelming. I like to work um, with like visually pleasing chaos and having work that is pleasing, but also kind of overwhelming. Um, so yeah, moving on to my recent work, I'm really inspired by my childhood and really creating nostalgic works that also um, still blend drawing and painting together with photography. I really wanna create like whimsical, um, 
childlike pieces. So in these more recent works, I'm actually using my baby blankets as the main source of imagery, really just embracing, you know, childhood and naivety and stuff. So yeah, this is a really a work in progress um, right now. This is like my most recent work. Um, again, I'm really process driven. So there's like a lot um, going on here. I really like to blend photography and painting together. So I have like a digital print on canvas as the first layer. And then I have cyanotypes, digital image transfers and painting. And all the imagery is from my baby blankets. I just manipulate them in different ways because I really want to immerse people in my work. So this piece is pretty large. It's like three by four feet. So and this is going to be in my thesis exhibition. And yeah, I really um, enjoy creating this kind of work. Mm -hmm and things like that. Um, yeah, these are my final words. I just want to say thank you all for your time. And that went by so fast. It's actually kind of insane. So thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Teddy Lepley. I am a first year MFA candidate at UWM. Um, I'm studying print and narrative forms. I graduated from Ball State University with a degree in printmaking and drawing. Uh, my website is teddyleffley.com and my social media is Teddy Leffley. Um, feel free to message me, contact me if you have any questions that you don't get answered tonight. Um, my major influence, well, one of them is Kathy Kollwitz. Uh, Kathy Kollwitz is a German expressionist. I admire her ability to use the mark in woodcut to really emphasize the emotion in her uh, imagery. And in her etchings, she creates this tactile surface. And it feels like you look at it and you feel like you could touch it. And it really makes the imagery feel like all that more real. And these are things I try to do in my own work. Um, my BFA exhibition and drawing was about the spaces I inhabited and the people that I surrounded myself with. And it was called Teddy's World. And I employed <clears throat> animation, uh, puppets, portraiture to invite a viewer into my world to see the things that affect me. Um, these 10 foot puppets, I came into the exhibition every day and I adjusted them to act out my transition from home to moving to college. My BFA exhibition in printmaking uh, was about my own relationship and my relationship to other people and their relationships. I made four large uh, woodcuts and one book uh, these woodcuts were like glimpses into my domestic life with my partner. Um, they depicted us doing everyday things um, to like show people that we are know, normal, that we are not scary. Um, the bright colors and dramatic like wood uh, gouge marks and shapes invite the viewer in and they come up and they see happy, smiling, queer people. We are um, we, they, we are um, happy, content in our home and the viewer, but we are also like uncaring of what the viewer thinks of us. So my book, People Love, is a book of nine etchings and it is um, people in my life, uh, family, friends, acquaintances and their relationships. And it is about how love is um, all encompassing. Um, it doesn't matter what a person's religion is, uh, the color of their skin, their gender, love is love. Um, this is, happens to be a pretty controversial thing to say, surprisingly. Um, more uh, recent work, uh, this is for a woodcut called Pansy. Um, I start with like a small drawing and then I scale that up to the size of what the woodblock will be. Uh, this was four feet by two and a half feet. And then I transferred, well, I redraw it on the block, but in reverse because it'll be reversed once it's printed. And every time I do this, the drawing changes and it's like a time for contemplation to redraw the image. And as I start cutting and I'm gouging out the whites in the block, um, I'm putting in my emotion, my sadness, my, my anger, the feelings I have. Um, and this was about that moment in my life in high school before I came out. And I had a lot of shame and, you know, I kept everything in. So I couldn't like 
become myself. Uh, I have pansies up on the in the corner, just like a slight like hint towards the subject matter. Um, and I discovered a new um, hinge for making puppets, and it's so simple and freeing, and like the arms can move. It's just beautiful. Um, and I was like, I'm gonna do something I've wanted to do since my 10 foot puppets. And that was to make a puppet from in printmaking. And I used uh, copper and I etch and I scrape and then I burnish and I etch again and I scrape and I burnish and I create that tactile surface that like brings the image to life. So Paper Teddy is a puppet that I am going to use in stop motion animation. And Teddy is going to explore new spaces. He's going to explore his new body He's going to come into himself. He's going to impress himself onto different spaces and he's going to make queer spaces. He's going to make a home for himself. And this is also an exploration, um, my own exploration that I'll be doing while making the animations. And I've been thinking about book as a time-based medium going along with animation. In this book, I wake up, I put on my dress and heels and I make breakfast and then in the center of the book in the climax, I am moving around the house. I am dancing and I am making my apartment a queer space, my home. And at the end, I take off the skirt and dress and I put on my heel um, out like regular clothes. All right, thank you everyone. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is uh, Will Manley. I'm currently a sophomore at the Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design. My pronouns are he, him, um, and I am a multidisciplinary uh, queer artist. Um, so basically I work with a lot of different um, mediums and mostly like found objects um, to give form to my mostly conceptual uh, work. Um, I wanted to start off kind of talking about some of my inspirations um, that kind of helped me physicalize my work. Um, Stanya Khan's video work, specifically Don't Go Back to Sleep. Um, I think the video work is fantastic. Um, Jenny Holzer's truisms, um, specifically her projections onto different architecture and um, buildings. Um, and Vaughn Larson's um, different photography work. Um, I think their work with um, exploring cis heteronormative um, spaces as a queer person is just really inspiring. Um, so my most recent body of work, which is what I'm showing here, um, is kind of me and where am I, I have been the past few months um, as far as transitioning. Um, and so this is chronological. And these first few pieces were kind of me understanding, um, you know, and, and coming to terms with the fact that medically transitioning is not what I, I thought it was. Um, I expected transitioning to be very, you know, intimate private matter. And it became a very public spectacle, um, especially when I had to go to, you know, random doctors and tell them my life story to get um, medical care. Um, and so this kind of confrontational work came from feeling invaded and feeling kind of just ripped open in front of these people um, that I didn't really know. And I, so I felt confrontational, like I needed to explain myself and just be see-through transparent almost. Um, and so I explore these things through a kind of medical lens um, using different um, expired medical equipment. Um, and I think that that really um, helps me to give my thoughts and feelings on it a form as well as kind of show what my world has looked like um, the past few months with doctors and pharmacies and injections and pills and all kinds of things that I am very grateful for, but it's just how my life has looked um, for the past few months. Um, when I'm making my work, um, I do try to keep that kind of ritual of, you know, working in with equipment. And I do use um, pretty much all equipment except for fake blood. I don't think that's medical equipment, but using syringes, uh, surgical tubing in previous, um, there was the surgical drape that was being projected on. Um, and just this kind of ritual of using these same objects that I also use to take care of myself um, and kind of create the body has really been something that's helped me. Um, my later work kind of begins to, I kind of began to understand that, you know, even though I am a queer person and though I am in a queer relationship and that can feel very 
open and very exposed, I'm still allowed to set boundaries. I'm still allowed to say what I am and am not sharing. Um, and that this video was the very beginning of that and understanding that, you know, I can keep these intimate moments of transness and queerness without having to expose them. Um, this is my most uh, recent work um, in keeping that kind of um, intimate and, um, you know, my thoughts and feelings um, and keeping that boundary, but still, you know, kind of keeping it contained and, you know, in a little space. So in these fluid um, specimen cups, hopefully if you poured them all together, you would get me. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you so much uh, for this. Um, this is my contact info, uh, my Instagram, if you'd like to see more work um, or if you have any questions, but thank you so much for letting me share. Um, yeah. And to everyone that went before, I didn't type it, but all of your presentations and work has been fantastic. Um, holy shit. Thank you. Hello, my name is Alexandra Panich. I was born in St. Petersburg, Russia, and I received my undergraduate degree in studio arts from Concordia University in Montreal, Canada. Uh, now I'm a MFA candidate in Peck School of Arts here in UWM. So my superpowers are painting, drawing, and printmaking, uh, particularly stone lithography. I find a lot of inspiration in medieval and orthodox art. Um, I find it's extremely fascinating how the medieval artists were trying to grasp and depict divinity. Uh, and this is something that I connect a lot, even though I'm not a religious person um, by all means. <laughs> uh, so uh, I uh, find a lot of inspiration in contemporary forms as well. And here are two of my favorite artists. Uh, on the left, you can see a drawing by Robert Nava. Uh, this is a drawing, but he also does fantastic large-scale paintings, and he's from Midwest too. He's from Indiana, so if you're not familiar with his work, go see his work. And the guy on the right is Evgeny Antufiev. He's a young Russian artist who works with shamanic artifacts. So, uh, going to my practice. I work a lot with folklore, mythology, and legends. I feel like the stories that these myths and legends are telling, they're kind of a windows to the past and they provide us with a lot of knowledge, a lot of wisdom, and they kind of give us a better understanding of why we are the way we are. So to me, uh, legends and myths are uh, like wonderful links between past and the present and possibly even with the future. So uh, right now I am working on the project that is, oh, we're paused. Are we? Yes? No? Oh, okay. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, now I'm working on the series that I explore in uh, the role of wolf in mythology. And wolf has always been seen as something very controversial. And that's what fascinates me. So if we take uh, mythology of pretty much every single nation, uh, wolf would be seen like something evil or something good at the same time. So, uh, for example, when we go to Scandinavian mythology, we would see that uh, there is Fenrir, the wolf, who would eat the sun and cause the end of the world. And on the other hand, the head uh, god of uh, Scandinavian pantheon would have uh, Geri and Freki, the companion wolves, who would be pretty nice creatures. <laughs> um, so in Slavic mythology, wolf was seen as intercessor between the world of deceased ancestors and our world, which is kind of an interesting allegory uh, of memories, I find. 
So here you can see two of my drawings. And while when I paint, I have to pre-plan a composition before I start on canvas. For drawings, I never do that. Uh, those drawings, they serve to me as a therapy. So I kind of let my mind on the paper and it's like a meditation, honestly. Oh, so here you can see the lithograph I, I've done. I've done much more, but this one is still uh, my favorite. I really love how the water touches came in. And lithography is something that it gives me a sense of control <laughs> because I'm a very OCD person. And when your lithography prints, oh my God, you feel like you've got the power. Uh, so <laughs> that's all I could fit in five minutes. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. I hope it wasn't too lame. So uh, if you would like to know more about my practice or see more of my work, please feel free to follow me on Instagram. I post regularly and you'll get to know me and my work. And uh, I'm very open to questions and feel free. It's Alexandra with KS, weird spelling, double underscore, punish. And sorry. <laughs> Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Sogo Sagachi. I'm a first year student in UWM uh, in a fine art student. And then uh, I am from Iran. It's about two years that I've been here in the United States. And um, yeah, it's taking so long. <laughs> okay. Uh, as I said, I'm 23 years old and I immigrated to the United States in 2018. And if I want to describe myself in one sentence, I must say, I love art and I'm very energetic and I'm also very eager to learn new things. I am a compassionate person. Social justice is also very important to me. I love the culture and history of my country and I'm very interested in showing this culture to the world through art. And here I'm sharing some of my works with you. So this piece called Sailing of Amin and Dole in Kajan, Iran, uh, and it's derived from Iranian art and architecture. And after Arabic people came to Iran, this kind of art became very common in Iran and it's derived from Mandela. They personally visited this place and it really amazed me because of the depth on this place. Uh, and you see the focal point is the sky and uh, I really feel like, uh, this is kind of like life because in the mandala, every kind of pieces are kind of matched together and they're kind of trying to show us the focal point in the middle. So this piece is, is also a mandala and there's an eye in the middle. In the old days in Iran, uh, they accompanied this uh, just as a symbol to protect themselves from negative vibes. And uh, I started to do this project by drawing sketches and that came to my mind. And finally, I uh, just use a cutter for that. Okay, and this piece is also called Eyes. Uh, there's a lot of uh, child works in my country that uh, I had a really like feeling about them. Uh, they have to work because uh, because of the bad economy in my country and uh, they're very young, they can't go to school. Uh, I was just trying to show her face and, uh, but you can't see the uh, outside of that picture, but you can know what is going on around that face. Uh, this is also the calligraphy painting, which I made. Uh, it's uh, a, one of the famous poetry uh, from Iranian famous poem called Hafez. And the meaning of the poetry is uh, just the good days are gonna come, so don't be sad. And I just uh, try to put this in a calligraphy style and uh, put those mandalas over there to just make it more cultural and uh, give the feeling to that uh, kind of poem. And uh, this piece called Inner, I made that with a uh, micro pen and also India ink. Uh, I was trying to make composition between myself and tiger and also flowers. Um, I'm also very interested in you uh, using details on my painting. So I find micro pen very interesting uh, because I was able to put uh, a lot of details on my painting. 
Uh, this piece is also called Freedom. Um, I was trying to show that uh, the regular people are trying to put you down, uh, but when you want to be free, uh, you should be different from other people. Uh, you shouldn't follow other regular people. They always want to wrap you and put you down, but you have to be free and uh, choose your own way. And I'm also very interested in uh, drawing portraits from people and just put them in abstract ways. Uh, this is a painting from one of the famous Iranian actress uh, and she is, she's a very nice woman. She do a lot of things uh, for human rights. And I just tried to show her face in a very beautiful way, uh, just make it more abstract with the flowers uh, to just show her inner beauty in her face. Hi all, um, I'm Abigail Tesmer. I go by Abby. Um, I graduated from Arrowhead High School out in Heartland in the class of 2020. And I am a first year student at the Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design pursuing a degree in communication design with minors in industrial design and business. I'm also super honored to be here, just gotta say that. Um, some of the things that influence my life are cars and bikes. I grew up around cars um, through my family, um, along with motorcycles, and I think it's very suiting, um, especially being in the Milwaukee area. Um, I love working on them. I love taking pictures of them, drawing them. I mean, you name it. Um, this is one of my project cars right now, which I'm so fortunate to work on um, with my family. And it has been such an incredible experience. Um, another big influence, um, our home is a little shack on Okachi Lake. Um, nothing too fancy except for the incredible view that that is a brand new painting every night. Um, and I absolutely love it. I think it is just such a great opportunity. Um, I also love theater. Um, theater has been such a big part of my life, whether it's um, working behind the scenes on the stage, um, doing photography of it, uh, literally everything. Um, anyways. My first submission um, for the exhibition was Apocalyptic Self-Portrait. Um, I created this piece through one of my classes at Myad um, through our digital 2D class. And I really wanted to embody the feeling of what was going on when the pandemic first kind of hit all of us um, a year ago, that feeling and um, even though it feels like it's almost mellowed out now, but I really wanted to encase that through that piece. Um, this is Okachi Surfer. Um, I love photography because you can tell such an amazing story through your images. And um, I love being able to do that, um, whether that's through still figures or in motion, like uh, this was my neighbor that I was able to take a picture of while he was surfing. Um, and it was such, I love, I love taking pictures in the moment and creating that little scene. I love doing a lot of things. I love to make stuff. Making stuff is so fun and it keeps you so busy. I love woodworking. Um, this is a piece I did through our high school. I was fortunate enough to do that along with a logo design for our drama department. Um, a buddy of mine asked me to do some logo designing for him. I was fortunate to do that. Um, and the State Park sticker, which was my first time ever doing anything through Illustrator. Um, I also love photography. I cannot say that enough. Um, through th theater, capturing those moments through um, cars and bikes and capturing those every element and the way the light dances off of those surfaces and people. Um, people are great. 
um, knowing people is great and talking with people are great. Um, so best way you can find me um, and some of my stuff is through Instagram at AT Design, um, A Tesmer Design for the handle. Um, yeah, just seeing a little bit of everything. I love working with people and seeing people's other people's artwork through the feed. So thank you guys so much for listening and I love I love all of this. So thank you guys. Everyone, if you it, it's just more fun if I can hear, <laughs> but uh, if you want to unmute, uh, unmute and just, uh, you know, make some noise for these fabulous artists. Woo! Woo job, <laughs> Thank you everyone. for your time. <laughs> that was awesome. Good, good. I'm glad. It was good to hear from everybody. Okay. Thank so, you for making this happen. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we always love uh to see all the work in the jury show and get to hear from you guys as well. So does anyone, I'm looking through the chat, but um, did anyone have any questions for any of the artists? Uh, you can enter them into the chat or um, you can unmute. We can have a free for all, <laughs> anyone can talk. <laughs> Let's see if anyone put any in the chat. If not, that's also okay. Um, while I'm kind of wrapping up, uh, if you do have a question, feel free to put it in there, but I'll kind of start wrapping up here. So thank you all for attending tonight's artist talks. Thank you especially to the artist speakers for giving us a little more insight into your work and practice. Um, it's always great to hear from everyone and, and I love seeing the work and then getting to kind of, it comes alive when I get to hear you know, when we all get to hear what you have to say about it. So thank you so much for taking the time to make the slides and, um, you know, taking the time to talk about everything with us. Um, and you can okay, check I out- I have a question, sorry. Oh, oh. Awesome, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear a little bit more about Teddy's world, like kind of walk us through it because that just sounds like the most incredible thing. Yeah, it was a lot of different things. <clears throat> so I had two stop motion animations. I had like 20, portraits that I drew of my, my friends and family. <clears throat> they're just, they're like uh, 20 by 18. And then those large puppets and I had fish hanging from the ceiling. The fish like represented people that come in and out of our lives. And there's a lot of like sayings that equate fish with people, like there are plenty of fish in the sea. Um, but yeah, it was about how I felt that leaving in my small town and coming to uh, university that the people and spaces that I was around had changed me and I became some, you know, my friends, you know, like I think that when we meet someone, we take pieces of them that we admire or like, and we like apply it to ourselves. Um, so that was what Teddy's world was about. It was about like how I felt that I was becoming myself or someone, you know. Very cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Teddy. Any other questions? I don't want to make too much of an awkward silence, <laughs> but uh, just kind of how Zoom works, I guess. Um, yeah, okay. This might be a little bit of a general yeah. question for all the other artists in the chat, but I have never done anything like this before. First time ever doing like an artist talk. So I'm just wondering, is this a first for anybody else or what have you guys been a part of? It's my first, first for me. Oh. <laughs> Neat. Yeah, it was interesting. Definitely. It went way faster than I thought it would. I was like scared. And then it just was over in the blink of an eye. So <laughs> it's like, oh, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> this is my first time talking to a group of people that I don't know about my work. Usually it's like in a class setting. I've like given talks, but yeah, this was something new. And the time constraint was stressful because I feel like I could talk forever, but that was difficult. It was good. Yeah. Good hearing everybody's talk. 
Yeah, I also think that time was very like, whoa. <laughs> and Teddy and I, we did uh, rehearse because I think that we are used to give like longer talks. So it was a challenge. It was very interesting, but it's still like when you are one to like one talking to each other, it's one sit setting. And when you talk to the people you don't know and it's five minutes, it's like, oh. <laughs> But I think everybody did great. But I know, guys, it, like I, I, I know how much effort it took from each and every of you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank you to everyone for you know putting this together and and talking and and yeah, it's, it, even though it's a shorter amount of time, it's a lot of pressure to get everything in there, right? So um, I appreciate your patience with that and. Um, yeah, it was great. It was great to hear from everyone. And thank you also, especially if this was your first time talking this through in this virtual format and also so quickly. So yeah, I think you all did a great job. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? If not. All right. So, uh, now that you've seen all this amazing work and you've gotten a little bit of feedback or not feedback, but kind of a little bit of uh, background for all these pieces, uh, you can check out this work and many more amazing artists at the online 48th annual jury show. Uh, it's on our virtual exhibitions website. Um, I'm going to link it in the chat shortly, uh, along with some other important links that I did at the beginning. But if you came in a little later, you probably don't have those links. So I will send them uh, shortly. Um, for everyone's knowledge, our next event is the opening of the first year experience. It's going to be opening on April 1st with a Zoom reception at 7.30 p.m. Uh, this exhibition will also be entirely virtual. And then our next exhibition after that will be Matope J. Johnson, In Search of a Benevolent Kind of Blue, which will open on April 8th at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom. That show will be virtual, but also you'll be able to, uh, if you're a UWM campus community member, you'll be able to check it out in person. So that's exciting. Um, we hope that you will consider signing up for our monthly newsletter to make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming exhibitions and events. The form can be found on the homepage of our website. Uh, please make sure to mark your calendars for our upcoming events. And as mentioned before, all information will be put in the comment section to the right. Thank you all, and I hope you have a great evening. <laughs>